Hi guys, back with another video. So uh, recently Intel launched the more like stripped down version of the 9900K, the uh, 9900KF, which is exactly the same CPU as the original 8 core 9900K, but it lacks the integrated graphics uh, unit, the so called iGPU. And uh, there was like a big article uh, not that long ago posted at tomshardware.com by a very well known uh, overclocker from the USA, uh, Splave, uh, commenting that the new KF version of the uh, 8 core Coffee Lake is, a, a, is an amazing overclocker and uh, people should be getting it. So uh, recently I managed to get my hands on uh, on a one so somewhat binned sample of a 9900KF and also the new arrow stepping of the 9900K and uh, also this specific 9900KF is uh, also uh, arrow stepping instead of the original and older PO stepping so uh, I did some tests on the uh, EVGA Z3, Z390 Dark which is over here although I used the uh, a retail version of the board, not the engineering sample that you can see on the top right corner of the screen. Uh, and uh, my results weren't that amazing with the uh, 9900KF. Uh, I managed to get 5.3 GHz stable in Cinebench uh, with a V core of a little over 1.3 volts, like 1.32, with very good temperatures like uh, 70 degrees or so. And uh, I really tried 5.4, but it really wasn't going to pass. So it, in my words, it wasn't anything that spectacular, considering what I've already seen with these CPUs. The uh, uh, KF RO CPU sample that I have here is pretty much the same as my original uh, 9900K engineering sample, which I got back in uh, November. Uh, then I moved on and... Uh, tried the arrow stepping 1900k and this is the only uh, arrow stepping sample which I managed to test and uh, it did amazingly well uh, I was able to pass uh, 5.4 gigahertz with uh, around uh, like 1.3 volts or maybe even slightly under and uh, fi even 5.5 gigahertz with 1.38 set V core when temperatures were like around 70 degrees so that is a really amazing result. The uh, best CPU that I ever had was the legendary 5.5 uh, uh, GHz with 1.335 set V core, uh, which I demoed in many videos uh, some time ago, like in December, and uh, that passed uh, th that passed Cinebench with that voltage when the core temperatures were uh, hitting 62 degrees max, as I had very cool. Uh, room temperature in, during that time so uh, the 1.38 happened with like 6 to 8 degrees higher temperature so if I had exactly the same maximum core temperatures I'm sure the arrow stepping would pass 5.5 gigahertz Cinebench with 1.35 set V core so that is amazing result so uh, my overall thought about the whole uh, KF versus original K and so on is that the uh, KF CPUs are really just bad uh, CPU samples and they just removed the iGPU altogether and the most stupid part of the whole, whole uh, release as they are exactly the same price as the original 9900K and even more expensive than the original 9900K. When I look at the prices here in Finland I can see that the cheapest price for 9900K is 515 euros with shipping included and uh, the cheapest price for 9900KF which doesn't have iGPU which also is worth at least some money uh, is 539 euros with shipping included so the uh, uh, price difference is at least 24 euros so it's a few dozen euros more than the original 9900K which has an iGPU so uh, that sounds really stupid to me. So uh, if the 9900KF was, let's say, like at least 50 euros cheaper, then I would be very happy about the 9900K and I would recommend everyone to buy it over the 9900K. But 
since that it's nothing uh, spectacular here. I know that in uh, the Splave's uh, results he got the best uh, overclocking end results with this one here and we managed to test three CPU samples and they aren't anything better than the original 9900K. I don't, re I don't really see any point on buying the 9900KF at this very present moment in time if they do not lower the price on that particular CPU model. So, uh, also some guy, or well, quite well-known guy from Italy, managed to get, or he managed to find a very nice uh, 9900KF, which did like uh, around 7 GHz for uh, multi-core tests and over 7.4 uh, for SuperPi 32M on LN2. I also ran both of these CPUs on LN2 not that long ago, around two weeks ago, and uh, the overall LN2 results go quite well and hand in hand with the uh, water results. The uh, 9900KF, which only did 5.3 something of water, maxed out at around 6.7 to 6.8 for Cinebench on LN2. And that's, that was with uh, full pot temperatures and 1.7 something on the V-Core. So uh, it's pretty much the same as my original 7700K. The uh, RO version of the 9900K did much better. As it, man uh, uh, as it managed to pass Cinebench R15 at 5.5 GHz of water, it did 6.940 uh, for Cinebench R15 and 11.5 on LN2, and that is a really nice result, considering that that is the only CPU uh, I managed to test. That is a very nice result, as usually finding like 6.9 to 6.95 GHz 9900K or 8-core Coffee Lake CPU in general, it requires a lot of pinning as uh, not all of the not all CPUs are that good. So uh, uh, even so, the uh, best 8-core uh, Coffee Lake that I have had here has been the original 9900K, which I got to test back in uh, November and December, but sadly that, that one died. So uh, if you find uh, an 8-core Coffee Lake, which does 5.5 GHz on water cooling with a very good uh, like water cooling setup, then the chances are very good that it will do 6.9 to even close to 7 GHz or beyond on LN2. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this particular chip here. Uh, I was really hoping to hit that 7 GHz barrier with that one, but 6.940 to 6.950 is already a very nice result, and uh, I will try lapping this one and see if I can uh, improve the clocks at all. The uh, single core isn't that good compared to the uh, previous CPU that I had. This can only do like 6 or 7.3 something for Super Pi, Pi Fast and so on, as the previous one did 7.4 plus. But yeah, this is, this is also very good. And uh, as, these are po as these are technically the same as the original 1900K, they, they will also fit uh, in uh, all the boards like the Z170M OC formula, Z170 OC formula, the big model, and also the uh, uh, Maximus 9 motherboards. There's a very good guide for this particular board here, as well as the uh, uh, Maximus 9 Apex on the HWBot forums. So uh, if you happen to own either of those boards, then uh, you should go and check the guide out, as it's very easy to get the 8-core uh, CPUs working on those uh, specific models. You only need a BIOS that, su that supports these newer CPUs, then you have to uh, uh, solder a jumper wire on the board to force the system to turn on, or you can get lucky and get the system to post by just uh, shorting the two specific pads uh, on the bottom side of the CPU. But it's much easier if you can solder a wire on the board. Sadly, I cannot make a more specific uh, test video uh, for these CPUs right now as this board uh, suddenly died. It only gives that stupid uh, 53 debug code so I have to see if I can if there's any chance to fix it or then I just have to find a new one but we will see. But yeah I will make a more detailed video about uh, overclocking the uh, 9900KF as well as the arrow stepping 9900K on the EVGA Z Z390 Dark but the overall conclusion at this very present moment at this very present moment is 
that you should not buy the 9900KF just because of the price. The uh, iGPU is still worth some money in the end, although most users who are buying the uh, 8 core CPUs will be buying an external graphics card, but to my ear it's, it, only sound, it only sounds stupid that a stripped down model costs more than the original model from which the stripped down version has initially been made. But yeah, uh, if you have some questions or comments about these CPUs, then please give a comment down in the below. So many people have been asking which would be the, like the wisest option to buy. So I'm still saying that you should get the, orig uh, the original 1900K. I think the arrow stepping overall seems very good as this is the only CPU I got to test and it did amazingly well. So uh, I think these might be slightly better on average compared to the older PO stepping. But so far the best 9900K 9900 uh, CPUs have been the weak 36 batch from 2018. My uh, previous CPU that I used in my videos was that batch as well as the uh, uh, best 9900K for SuperPi 32M, which uh, a quite known guy from Germany, uh, Bull Shooter has. That, that is also weak 36 batch from 2018. So uh, we will see if even better CPUs will pop up with or among the uh, arrow stepping uh, CPUs. But yeah, anyways, if you have any comments or questions about these CPUs and how they work on various models, then please give a comment down below. And uh, thanks for watching this video and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.